There's one more property we should talk about for simplifying logs, especially when solving equations. And it's a little bit tedious to derive this particular property because I would need to introduce several other properties we don't use very often in order to do it. So I'm gonna ask you to just take this one on faith and you'll know it works because we can check our answers to all of these equations and make sure that in fact, this rule is not getting us into any trouble. This rule is called the exponent property of logarithms. And I'm going to phrase it three ways for log base 10, natural log and log base B. For log base 10, we would say log of x to the a can be rewritten as a times log x. In other words, that little exponent of a on the x to the a can be brought down in front. We can also phrase this as natural log of x to the a equals a times natural log a. So again, that a exponent can come down in front. And finally, log base b of x to the a can also be rewritten as a times log base b of x. So once again, that little a exponent can come down in front. So that's the exponent property of logarithms. And this can be pretty useful when we have non-integer bases. And we do run into those sometimes. You can solve problems using non-integer bases. For example, you can take a log base 0.5 on both sides. It's just not very convenient to write a base of 0.5 or a base of 1.072 as you write these logarithms. So in those cases, this exponent property can be a bit easier. I want to work through a problem using both the composition properties that you're used to and this new property, just so you can have some belief that this in fact will work out okay. So let's solve left parentheses 0 0.972 right parentheses raised to the t power equals 0 0.75. And we're going to do it two ways. The first way we're going to do it is by isolating the exponential and implying the inverse. So I'm going to isolate the exponential, which is the 0 0.972 to the t. It is isolated. And so now I'll take a logarithm on both sides. And what log will I take? I will take log base 0 0.972 on both sides. So it's a pretty weird logarithm. Here we go. On the left side, I'm going to write log base 0 0.972 of, and then a set of parentheses. On the right, I'm going to write log base 0 0.972 of, and then a set of parentheses. Kind of gross looking, huh? Inside the parentheses on the left, I'm going to write 0 0.972 to the t power. And inside the parentheses on the right, I'm going to write 0 0.75. Now on the left, the base of the logarithm matches the base of the exponent. Very gross bases, but they do match. And so the result is t. On the right hand side, I still have log base 0 0.972 of 0.75. And now remember, I can evaluate that directly with Desmos. I'm going to use a change of base just to get a little bit nicer looking result. So that'll be the log of 0.75 divided by the log of 0.972. Evaluating this, I get 10.1298. Now let's try it using the exponent property of logarithms. You still want to isolate the exponential part. Get everything else away from that before you do what comes next. Now we can take a log on both sides and it doesn't actually matter what log you take. So just to show you the contrast here, I'm going to take a natural log on both sides. So I'm going to take a natural log of left parentheses, right parentheses with some space in between on the left. And I'm going to take a natural log of left parentheses, right parentheses with some space in between on the right hand side. And then I'm going to write in the argument on the left side, 0 0.972 to the t. And then the argument on the right side, 0 0.75. So, so far it looks very similar to what we did before, only the bases don't match here, right? So this does not just become t because we don't have matching bases on the natural log and the 0 0.972. But this little exponent property of logarithm says I can take this t and move it in front. So I could rewrite this as t times natural log of 0 0.972 equals natural log of 0 0.75. And to solve for t, I would now divide both sides by the natural log of 0 0.972. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Divide by the natural log of 0.972 on the left and divide by the natural log of 0 0.972 on the right. We come out with t equals natural log of 0 0.75 divided by natural log of 0 0.972. And when we evaluate that, we get 10.1298. What you might notice here is that the result that we just got was the exact same thing as the result we got on the other method of solving in that they are simply different versions of the change of base formula. For our inverse method of solving, we got log 0.75 divided by log 0.972. And for this exponent property way of solving, we got natural log of 0.75 over natural log of 0.972. And that was just an arbitrary choice I made. I could have done this second problem using a log, in which case the results would even look the same. So now let's see if you can try these two equations that come next, solve them, and check your answers. Now do remember that you want to isolate the exponential parts before you do any tricky maneuvers involving logarithms. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, we're back. We're trying to solve 20 times left parentheses 1.22 right parentheses to the t power equals 1000. And we want to isolate the exponential part first, which is this part right here, the 1.22 raised to the t power. So we need to get rid of the 20 first. 20 is multiplied by the left-hand side, so let's divide it on both sides. That'll give us 20 times 1.22 to the t divided by 20 on the left, and 1,000 divided by 20 on the right. 20s reduce to make a 1, so now we have 1.22 to the t equals, and then 100 divided by 20 is 50, and we have the exponential part isolated. So now this is where we want to take a log on both sides. You can choose to take a log base 1.22 on both sides. You can choose to take a log on both sides. You can choose to take a natural log on both sides. We have methods now that make all of those work. I tend to write natural log because it's one less letter than everything else. So I am going to take a natural log, left paren, right paren on the left, and a natural log, left paren, right paren on the right. I'm now going to insert my equation. So in the left, I'm writing 1.22 to the t inside the argument of natural log, and on the right, I'm going to put 50 inside the argument of natural log. Now, natural log and the base of 1.22 do not match. So on the left side, this is not simply t, but we can bring that t down in front using the exponent property of logs, which would give us t times ln of 1.22 equals ln of 50. So that's looking great so far. All I need to do to isolate t is to divide both sides by the natural log of 1.22. So t ln 1.22 divided by ln of 1.22 equals natural log of 50 divided by ln of 1.22. ln 1.22s reduced to make a 1 and we have just t left on the left hand side. So t equals natural log 50 divided by natural log 1.22. And the result of that is 19.6732. That's rounding to four decimal places. Now we can check that answer by just plugging it back into the original equation. Let's just do that really quick. So our check says that we're going to do 20 times left paren, 1.22 right paren, raised to the 19.6732 power, and we're checking to see if that equals 1,000. Let's put that calculation into Desmos. 20 left paren, 1.22 right paren, raised to the 19.6732 power gives us 1,000.0097. 1,000.0097, and the question is, is that equal to 1,000? Well, it's about as close as we're going to get for 
an exponential function. It is really, really close. Uh, if we rounded to one decimal place, it would be there. Two decimal places would be off by 0 0.01. So that looks good. Let's try this last problem. Let's see how you did. We're going to solve 8,000 equals 2,500, left parentheses, 1.075, right parentheses, to the 10n power. We want to isolate the exponential part, which is the 1.075 to the 10n power. We'll start by dividing both sides by 2,500. 8,000 divided by 2,500 on the left, and 2,500 times 1.075 raised to the 10n power divided by 2500 on the right. 8,000 divided by 2500 gives us 3.2 on the left, and on the right those 2500s reduced to make 1, and we're left with just 1.075 raised to the 10n power. Now the parentheses around the 1.75 don't really matter, but I'll leave them there just to kind of make it look clean. Now we have isolated the exponential part, so I'm going to go ahead and take a log on both sides. Again, it doesn't matter which log I take, so I'm just going to take a natural log. On the left, I'm going to take natural log of left paren, right paren, and on the right, natural log of left paren, right paren. Inside those sets of parentheses, I'm just going to drop in the equation from the previous line. So on the left, I'll have natural log of 3.2 equals, and then on the right-hand side, natural log of 1.075 to the 10n. On the left, there's nothing I can do with that. It's still natural log of 3.2, but on the right, I can take that 10n and put it in front using that exponent property. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to have 10n times natural log of 1.075. To isolate the n, I need to divide by everything else here. So I'm going to divide by 10ln 1.075 on both sides. 10ln of 1.075 on the left side and the right side. I'm dividing by that. Now this is a case where you're definitely going to want to check this calculation yourself. The tens reduce, the natural log of 1.075 reduces to make a 1, and we're left with only n on the right hand side. On the left hand side we have natural log 3.2 divided by 10 natural log of 1.075. Now, do check this yourself, because sometimes if you're not careful, that 10 doesn't actually fall in the denominator like you think it does. So you may want to add an extra set of parentheses around that denominator of 10 ln 1.075. The result of this calculation is n is approximately 1.6083. Again, rounding to four decimal places, and then let's check that and make sure that it works. So we'll have 8,000, going back to the original equation, equals 2,500, left paren, 1.075, right paren to the 10 times 1.6083. Nothing much we can do on the left side, but let's evaluate that number on the right side. 2,500, left paren, 1.075, right paren, raised to the, and then I'm going to put a left paren and do 10 times 1.6083 right paren in the exponent. So I'm putting that exponent in parentheses so that when I do the times, it doesn't fall back down to the base. The result of this is 7,999.86. And that is pretty close to 8,000. So I'm going to call that one good. The further away your check is, the more likely you're going to want to use that second method to check your answer. Usually you have results that are within about one unit of each other, but not always. It just depends on the size of the numbers and how far you rounded. Just to recap, the most important thing in this video is this word right here, isolate. You want to isolate the exponential or log part prior to applying the inverse. You always want to do that.